Hello, I'm Lou and welcome back to Open Up The Cloud. This is another video in a series about the Cloud Resume Challenge. In this video, we will be talking about splitting up our Lambda function. So in a previous video, we actually created a single Lambda function, which was returning mock data. In this video, what we're gonna do is actually break that up into two parts ready for a subsequent video. So what we're going to do is we're gonna have a Lambda function for our put or for putting items into our DynamoDB. And then we're gonna have a Lambda function also for getting those values out of our database. So we're gonna split those functions up as part of this video and then in the next video then we'll talk about actually adding items into our DynamoDB. So yeah, let's get started. Right, so in this video what we're gonna go through is, actually it's gonna be a little bit of an in-between video. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna break down our existing Lambda function into two parts. So we basically just created the DynamoDB in the last video which basically creates our state, creates our database. Uh, we've got somewhere to store the count when people come to our website. In this video what we're gonna do is just break down our existing Lambda function. So if you remember from before, let me show you real quick and go here. So if I refresh this page here, this is our previous function. So we had a, an API setup, which was returning some stub data, which is uh, what you can see here. What we're gonna do is now break that into two. So take that Lambda function and break it down into two separate Lambda functions. We, then we've got one Lambda function, which will uh, add the values to our database and another one that's going to get those values from our database. So we need two of them. We've got an existing one that's called hello world. All we're gonna do is just rename that and uh, just reconfigure it so we've got two functions. So in terms of breaking this down, so why are we breaking this down? Uh, when it comes to Lambda functions, basically you've got sort of two sort of decisions, two architectural patterns that you can go down. One is uh, monolithic functions and the other is just having sort of smaller functions or micro functions where you have a Lambda function or like the actual Lambda infrastructure, uh, one per piece of functionality. Now. There's a bunch of different trade-offs for these uh, two different patterns. And to be honest, it's also more of a spectrum rather than two different options. So you've got monolithic on one side and you've got smaller functions on, on the other side as well. So with the monolithic one, what you're doing is you're putting all of your code into a single Lambda deploy. And the way that that works is that's going to root at the application level. So requests are gonna come in through your load balancer or your API gateway. They're gonna hit the same endpoint they're gonna hit the same Lambda function. And then at the start of the Lambda, there's gonna be some logic like, you know, if condition type of logic that says, uh, if it's this request go here, this request go there. And all of your codes bundled into one, into one Lambda and you can root like that. The other option is basically you have a per Lambda per functionality, which is what we're going to do here. So we're gonna have one Lambda per functionality. And there's a bunch of different pros and cons for this. Uh, what I'll do here is I will commit and uh, a link also in the description to this article, which is by Jan which basically just explains some of the trade-offs between monolithic and smaller functions. But what I suggest also is well, just go to Google and also stick it, you know, monolithic lambda and trade-offs and have a bit of a read. There's not a, a right or wrong necessarily. Uh, I think some people will probably sit on, sit on the fence and some people will be more one way or the other. There's no right or wrong. Uh, it depends on your use case and it depends what you're doing. Uh, but yeah, so let's go ahead and actually get started and start breaking this up. What I'm going to do is first just fire up my template file. So what I've got in here is my hello world function from before. So now what I'm going to do is call this, uh, let's call it get, let's call it get function like that, get function. And I'm going to now, oops, sorry, I'm going to duplicate that. So we've got get function and put function. See, I've got a little squiggly there, which is probably saying, yep, duplicate key makes sense because we need to have these resources as separate names. So I've got put function now but I'm also pointing those to the same directory. So what I'm gonna do is change that to uh, put function, call that put function. And also I'm gonna change the path here to put. Uh, now it's a little bit weird because I'm I'm gonna leave this as this is for now, where it's got a, a get. That get is actually an HTTP method and we're gonna call the path put. We'll come back and clean this up later. What I'll do is I'll do a whole separate video on sort of REST best practices, HTTP, things like that. Uh, but for now, let's just leave that as it is for now for the sake of simplicity. And up here, let's change that path to get. And let's also change this handler to get function and the code URI also to get uh, function like that. And obviously now my directory is not correct. So I just need to rename this. So I'm gonna call this get function. And then I'm gonna go ahead and copy that and paste that in here, rename, get function, put function. And if I remember correctly, I think also my go mod is also called hello world yet. So I'm just gonna update that. 
get function in there, uh, put function. Depending on the language that you're using, you might need to rename a few things in here. Uh, hopefully this works first time. Let's uh, pray to the demo gods today. Uh, hopefully they're in my favor. So <laughs> that should create two different two different functions. The other thing I need to update also just quickly is the index HTML, because if you remember, we also have the path up here. So I'm just going to change that to get uh, and leave that as it was. And let me just double check my notes. So I've updated the path. I've updated my mod file. I've updated my directory. And yes, the last thing also I need to update is the make file. So I've also got myself a make file. You don't need one of these. If you don't want, you can just run the, the pure commands, but that's, uh, I find it a little bit cleaner. But then the thing is now, um, we basically have two Lambda functions. So do we need to do anything here? Uh, no, no, we don't need to do anything there just yet. So I'll skip over that. We can come back to that later. We don't actually need to update the make file just yet. And I will go ahead and deploy that now. Uh, so if I go make deploy infra, let's see if I got everything right. I'm just going to go back into AWS and that's CloudFormation. Uh, close that. I'm going to go over into the Lambda. Hopefully that's building as we speak in the background. And just going to, okay, that's asking for my password. Fill that in. There we go. So we've got a hello world function from before. And what we want to do is basically replace that. So then we've got the two functions that we talked about from before. Uh, let's see if that's building. And yeah, fingers crossed. Let's uh, let's see if everything builds okay, hopefully. So here we are. Let's have a look at our diff. So we've got two, uh, we've got get function and put function being created. And then we've got the other stuff from before getting deleted. Looks like there's some also some SAM magic here as well, because if you look, we've actually only got one API gateway resource. Uh, so obviously, it seems like SAM is creating just uh, just a single API gateway for the two resources. Um, we can have a look at that in just a second once it deploys. So that's creating those before it's deleting them, which is nice. Let's have a quick look in Lambda, see how that's progressing. So yep, yeah, I've got my get function and my put function. Seeing this red here for these deletes keeps making me think it's going to fail, but actually no, it passed. That's great. Um, let's have a look. So we've got my get function and we've got my put function here. So if I go back now, if I refresh that same URL, so this is prod hello, this should now be gone. Cool. So I've got internal server error. Now, hopefully if I swap that out for get, I should hopefully get, there we go. Wow. I named everything correctly the first time. That's awesome. Uh, so we've got get. And also if I do put here as well, uh, because Kind of confusing, as I said, it's using the get verb, which actually means we can use the URL for the put command. Yep, should get the same for put. However, we're going to modify this later. So there we go. We've got two functions set up uh, using Lambda and everything's ready to go so that we can start to package in our behavior that's going to modify the database. Okay, so now we've got our functions broken up and they are ready for the next step, which is we're going to actually modify the code in them so they can actually update our DynamoDB table. So that's it for today. It's just a bit of a setup for the subsequent video. Uh, I hope you followed along with that and I will see you in the next video.